God bless you. You are on with Bishop Robert Johnson. We've dedicated this week to doing a show, live broadcast at night for those individuals who are around the world. And man, we're back on. Last night, we were on with spiritual warfare. Tonight, we're back on with spiritual warfare. God bless you. We want to do a second half of spiritual warfare. So stay tuned. Amen. We prayed already. We're excited. Amen. We want to give you what thus said the Lord. Amen. It's kind of hot here where we are. So we will have the fan blowing in the studio. So please overlook the noise. Okay, here we go. Last night we did spiritual warfare. Tonight we'll look at it from the same perspective. If you didn't see the video last night, please Watch it so you'll catch up to where we are. And we thank God for you. Here we go. So tonight we're going to start with the understanding of spiritual warfare. And where we're trying to take it from the perspective of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, and the 10th verse where Paul writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The apostle tells us to put on the entire armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the enemy. Put on the entire armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Okay, let's go into this tonight or in the morning depending where you are. Our next scripture will be coming well let's deal with something right quick in the beginning God gave Adam dominion over the garden he had dominion over the earth the garden itself if you look at the translation is the earth because the garden God's earth was his garden but when Adam transgressed and he fell from the position that God had him in based on disobedience he transferred the garden into the hands of the enemy into the hands of Satan. That's what the Bible declares. And he says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, the garden, for I beheld Satan coming down as lightning. So when, when Adam gave up his position and forfeited because of disobedience, he gave up the guard, God's garden to man. And God cannot exist to where there is sin. Amen. So please follow us as we see what God is doing in spiritual warfare. The second part, I want to deal with something tonight. In 1 John 2.16, listen, now we just said that God's garden, the earth, Adam gave up a position and he gave up where God had him. So now the garden falls into the hand of the enemy because of Adam's disobedience. So now I need you to see 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It is not of the Father, but of the world. Adam, when he forfeited, he gave up his right and position that God had placed him in and he gave it up to the enemy. So tonight we want to see why spiritual warfare is critical for the believer and we want to gain understanding what happened. Amen. So please follow along. Here our next slide says in Ephesians 2 and 2 wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. So here the Bible simply states that Satan is the prince of the air, of the earth, or of God's former garden. All right, now watch this. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Why? Because all that is in the earth, remember, is the lust of the flesh, 
the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the father is not in it so the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof but when adam transgressed adam gave dominion of the earth over to the enemy that's why in the book of job there was a question asked from which cometh you satan and he answered from to and fro in the earth seeking whom i may devour so follow us tonight and see what god is doing so then if we go to the book of second corinthians i want to show you something that's critical second corinthians tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds i want to deal with verse four there are so many people today who are trying to fight the war that God has placed us in, which Satan has been defeated with their flesh. You cannot defeat Satan with your flesh. The book of Ephesians 6 chapter says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 2 Corinthians 4 says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then it talks about imagination and the things that exalt, it, exalt itself against the knowledge of God that comes through the mind. But I like in Acts, the 16th chapter, Paul lays out, he shows us a great example of how the war that you and I are fighting is in the spiritual realm. It is not in the physical world that you and I live in. Even though Satan is the prince of this world, the Bible says in Acts, the 16th chapter, that there was a young lady there. And the Bible says she brought her masters much gain through witchcraft. But the Bible said that she followed Paul and the servants of God around for many days. But the Bible said after Paul got tired, he was grieved. Paul never turned to the young lady. The Bible declares Paul turned to the spirit because he had the principal understanding of warfare. And he declared and called that spirit out in the name of Jesus. And the Bible said the same hour that the demon of the spirit came out. Child of God, listen to me. You're not fighting against your brother. You're not fighting against your sister. You're fighting against the spirit. The Bible declares in the Synoptic Gospels that Jesus had just got off the ship and he was going and there was a man who had been possessed with legions of demons. Watch this. The Bible says that the man fell and worshiped God, but Jesus, but the demon was still in him to when Jesus asked what was his name. He said, my name is legions for we are many. But the Bible declares that Jesus rebuked the demon out of the man. They went into the swine and ran over the hill. But here's my point. I want to get, I want to show you something. The same man that was possessed with demons, after Jesus got through with him, the Bible said that they came and found him. He used to sit among the tombs, cutting himself, but the Bible said that they came and found him clothed and sitting in his right mind. Child of God, we are not fighting a, a worldly or a fleshly war. The war is being is taking place in the spirit. And the only way that you and I can gain victory over the enemy is in the spirit. That's why Zechariah 4 and 6 said, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. The only way you can overcome the enemy is through the spirit of God. Let's see how that happens. In the book of Acts, we see the church beginning and we see the Holy Spirit poured out on those Jews that were there. Then in Acts, the 10th chapter, everyone else after Cornelius gets the invitation and they receive the spirit of God. But in Acts 1 and 8, the Bible says, you shall receive Deuteronomy. You shall receive the power of God. Well, what is the deutimus or what is the power of God? And I told you last night in John 14, 2, 6, it is the spirit of God that has power and authority here on earth. Adam had physical dominion, but when you are born again, child of God, you have spiritual dominion over the devil. Uh, so then I need you to understand John 14, 2, 6 said, if I go not away, the comforter can, can, cannot come. The power cannot come. Uh, 
Why? I got to go away so the Father can send it in my name. The name of Jesus gives us access to the Spirit or the power of God. The Spirit of God is the paracletus. It is the helper. For example, if you look at a doctor, he has a paramedic. The word para meaning helper. So he, the doctor has a paramedic, one who assists them before the patient gets to the hospital. If you look at an attorney, an attorney has a paralegal. Amen. And if you look at an educator or a teacher, they have what you call paraeducators. So then God gave you an eye in the Greek, the understanding of the word paracletus, one who assists and helps us as we go in this journey with God. But I need you to understand something. God in his word said in John 14, 2, 6, that the Holy Ghost, the, the paracletus, will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's why Philippians, the second chapter, says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, child of God, how do you get the mind of God? The Bible says in Isaiah 34, 16, to seek out of the book of the Lord and read, none shall fail, none shall lack her mate, for my mouth hath commanded and my spirit hath gathered. Before the foundation of the world, God wrote a letter in his prophetic voice, and everything that he wrote in that letter has and is and will be fulfilled. Jesus came as the offering or as the sacrifice of God, and he wrote in that letter confirming everything that God said before his birth that he would do and that he would carry it out. Just like you and I, at times, we want to divert away from the assignment. But what God did, he gave us power so we can stick to the assignment. Jesus did not want to drink from the bitter cup. He wanted to divert from the assignment. He went into the garden of Gethsemane and he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Child of God, God gave you power and authority so the enemy cannot tempt you to move out of place and position with God. Amen. We thank God for you tonight. We just want to come on and share some information to give you courage and to give you strength in this hour as this war is waged. Don't turn around. Don't back up. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Most of all, trust God beyond your circumstance because he that keep or kept Israel, he cannot fail and neither does he slumber or sleep. And I know he provides and watches over us. Consider what God tells Abraham in Genesis 22 and 18. Abraham in thy seed were all the families of the earth be blessed. Child of God, we are still heirs to the promises of Abraham. God bless you tonight. Stay strong. Stay encouraged. God bless you in the morning, wherever you are. You are a part of the power of the gospel group. Invite other people to join because the word of God is going forth here. There are the individuals that you have not heard yet, which you will get information and hear our other teachers and our other hosts to bring to you the word of God. I mean, we have to preach in the morning, but I told God, if you allow me to stay up, it's almost one, it is one o'clock in the morning here in the U.S. I say, God, if you allow me to stay up, I know you, get, you will give me the energy to minister your word tomorrow. And I said, God, I will do it. So we just want to say we love you and we thank God for you. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen.